Welcome to the Judge Angel's All-Star Show. Today we have Curtis McCall talking about Medicare. And we also have the recording artist, Freddie B, with a new song. Stay tuned. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Our next guest is so informative. You're going to get so much information, so listen carefully. We have the one, the only, Mr. Curtis McCall, who is a health care provider. Slash <laughs> Medicare agent. Yeah. Uh, financial uh, services product. A uh, broker. I'm licensed in seven states. I was going to say that in seven states, you're a broker, you're a financial advisor. And not so much a financial advisor uh, because I don't have a Series 6 or Series 7 license, uh, but the market has shifted to where a lot of the life insurance products have investment components within the policy. Today, let's talk about Medicare. Okay. Okay? We changed the subject. Medicare. What is Medicare? Medicare is provided by the federal government. Uh, if you've worked 40 quarters in your lifetime, which is 10 years, mm -hmm. okay, then you're entitled to Medicare. All right? You have both Part A and you have Part B. Okay? okay. You know when you got your paycheck, when you work at, a, at your job and you saw all of those deductions on there? Yes. Where there was nothing left over? <laughs> Well, part of some of those deductions were to pay for your retirement slash Medicare. Okay. And so when you turn 65, you're entitled to Medicare unless you have a permanent disability, mm. end-stage rhino disease, okay, some sort of permanent um, lupus could mm. be one of them. Mm. It has to be severe enough where you can't work, and then the federal government will automatically grant you Medicare. Excellent, excellent. So who pays for this? You pay out of your paycheck, and that you know covers what? Medicare? You've worked for 10 years. You've worked um, it's 40 quarters or 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you've paid into the system. So when you turn 65 or you have a disability, um, that's for if you're under 65, but when you turn 65, you're entitled to Medicare. And with that, you get all of these wonderful benefits. Uh, I, I think it's important to understand that, you know, Medicare only takes care of 80%. Okay. okay. So you have to either have to get a medical supplement or a Medicare Advantage plan that's going to take care of the other 20%. Oh, excellent, excellent. Now, what choices does a person and, have to make when they're looking at Medicare? You know, when you, you look... turn 65, you, you turn, you're not disabled, then what? You turn 65, you're not disabled, you have, you have I'm going to put it to you in layman's terms, okay, I'm going to keep Please it very do. simple for you. You have two choices. You can go with a medical supplement, and that takes care of the 20%. Now remember, Medicare only takes care of 80%. Your supplement's going to take care of the other 20%. Okay. Okay, and you have different types of supplements, different costs. Uh, but let's say for a hypothetically speaking here, your supplement costs you $100 a month. Okay, so you have your Medicare, 80%. You have your supplement that takes care of the 20%. Yes. And then you have to have your prescription drug plan. Okay, so that's one option. And the benefit of that option is you can go see any doctor you want in the United States. Any doctor that accepts Medicare, and most of them do. What's that option called? How do you differentiate well, here's from the, the thing. other option? Well, here's the thing. When you have your, your medical supplement and your original Medicare, there's no pre-approvals required. Those were, those no referrals required, but there was a cost associated with that, and that's a cost for the supplement plan. Oh, okay. Right? So that's a gotcha clause that's in there. <laughs> okay. Always look for the fine print, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's always there. <laughs> right. So what over 54 million Americans do is they get what's called a Medicare Advantage plan. Mm. Okay. Now that doesn't cost you anything other than the Part B that you're already paying for. When you first turn 65. Okay. Okay. So the Advantage plan gives you what? Advantage plans are, uh, wow, you know, the Advantage plans are, are becoming 
they're, they're almost becoming like a medical supplement plan. You have Advantage plans that are nationwide now. You have the PPO Advantage plans. You have the HMO Advantage plans. Listen, folks, you've seen a lot of stuff on television, okay? You know, free dental, free vision. What you want to look for in your Advantage plan, Judge, is you want to read your EOC, your evidence of coverage. You want to know that that healthcare company is going to be there for you in your time of need. If you get cancer, you want to make sure that they're going to provide, pay for all those chemotherapy drugs that you're going to need. Well, wait a minute. That's a little misleading. If you think you have the Advantage plan, you think everything is covered, but yet you're saying read the fine print. That is correct. You want to read your evidence of coverage. Um, you know, a lot of the companies, they, they, they dress their plans up. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they, it's, what's it called? Lipstick on a pig? Yes. Okay. Fluff. But when something happens, you know, you want to know that that health care company is going to be there. There's one particular network. Um, I won't say any names because I don't want it to seem like I'm steering anyone or, or favoring one agency over another. But they have the most advanced cancer research facility on the West Coast. Mm. Okay, so if I run into a client that has a history of now, cancer, now. I'm going to put them in that particular plan Yes, that specializes in that stuff. Okay, there we go. So again, it goes to who you're working with. If you're working with the agent that's very knowledgeable, very concerned, and very experienced, then you're going to get this type of guidance. That is correct. But if you get... Everybody has to start somewhere. But if you get a newbie that really doesn't know the nuances That's of right. that, it can, it can be a little well, daunting. The, yeah, well, the most important thing, Judge, is that new agent, old agent, existing agent, the most important thing is he has to care. Well. He has to care. He has to care about his client. He has to fight for his client. Okay? I don't get calls from my clients because I do what's called a policy review. And that, that means is? I go over their evidence of coverage with them. So what I do, and I think most agents do, or they should do, is create that relationship between the consumer and the Medicare agency that they signed them mm -hmm. up with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Understand exactly what the company is offering. Now, I notice here in Las Vegas there are a lot of new health care uh, companies springing up. It seems like every month there's a new company. What's that all about? Well, you know, I tell you what, you know, you have your, your, your mainstream national com companies that are in 50 states, uh, and then you have some that are, that are trying to uh, enter the market, you know, mm -hmm. quietly. Uh, now, I have seen cases where the carrier comes into a jurisdiction, and two years later they've got to pull out because they don't have enough enrollments. Okay. Oh, okay. They don't have enough clients in that particular carrier. You also want to make sure that carrier has uh, enough doctors and providers within their network. Okay. And once again, this is back to the lipstick on the pig. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're going to give you, you know, $6,000 in dental. We're going to buy you a new car. Okay. But judge, don't you get sick on us because we've got no place to take you. We have no doctors. <laughs> we've got no doctors. We've got two doctors in the network. Yeah. One's on vacation. The other one's sick. Yes, yes. <laughs> So you want to do your due diligence. Make sure, make Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Now, Curtis, I know um, you, you've said it many times that money is paid from your Social Security into your health care program. That's correct. When you get those deductions that came into your, when you got your paycheck from, let's say, the casino. While working. While working. Okay. You had Social Security. You had Medicaid. You had all these different fees. Right. Those fees went into, some of those fees went to pay for your Medicare when you first turned 65. Right. But you also said, can any of those monies paid to Social Security be returned? You know, I, I get this question asked a lot. People see the commercials on television. Get all of your money back. Really? I hadn't I can seen get, that you know, one. I probably would have been oh, over there. Oh, you get to Part B? Oh, yeah, they're going to give you back $140 on your, on your Social Security. Or I get your Part B back, you know, called the Part B buyback. You know, that's one of those things where you, you know, buyer beware, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you go from having a, a $1,000 maximum out of pocket in, the, in your current plan that you're on, 
And for those of you who are at home, it's called the MOOP, okay? That's the maximum out of pocket. That's a thousand dollars maximum out of pocket in a calendar year. So let's say if you had to have surgery, and the surgery's only, you know, the surgery costs you forty, fifty thousand dollars. Well, your max out of pocket on the plan that you're on is only a thousand dollars. So no matter what happens, you're you've got a cap on the expenses that you're going to pay for that particular procedure, and that's a combined cap throughout the year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now the plan that's going to give you back. $120 on your Social Security. Get all your money back. That's free. That plan, although it may be true, they're going to give you 140 or 170 They're going to get your money back. But now you go from a $1,000 max out-of-pocket moop to a $6,000 max out-of-pocket. You mm. go from paying a zero copay when you go to the doctor, now you're paying $40 copay. That's a big difference. It's a huge difference. Huge it's, difference. It's, it's not worth it unless you have a secondary insurance plan. So if you're in the military, oh, that's great. You've got the veterans at the back of yeah. Get your secondary insurance, okay? Or if you're on some sort of a employee group retirement plan that allows you to carry two insurances. Um, so you, wanna, you, you may want to consider and read the fine print. Uh, get a good agent. Have him go over it with you. Take us through the steps. A person turns 65. They're eligible for a Medicare where do they go? Who do they talk to? You know, you call a Social Security. You call your local Social Security office and you tell them you want to um, activate your uh, Medicare. Okay? You want to activate your Part A and your Part B. Okay? Two weeks later, you're going to get this little red, white, and blue card in the mail. Okay? okay? Now, that doesn't mean your job stops there. Okay? I had one client. I'm going to tell you a funny story. Okay. I had one client. Right? Actually, he, it, I, you know, he calls me every once in a while. He received his Medicare card, right, and he didn't do anything with it. He thought that was all he needed, okay? He didn't get a medical supplement. He didn't do a Medicare Advantage. So every month, his Social Security, because of the penalties, his Social Security kept going down and down every month. So the, for the purpose of this conversation, let's say his Social Security was $1,000 a month, right? So the next thing you know, it's now the, you know, $999. So... You know, and during this time, he also applied for Medicaid, right? So stay with me, okay? <laughs> stay with me here. He Don't go anywhere. He was a confused little puppy. <laughs> stay with me, okay? Now, Medicaid, in order to qualify for Medicaid, okay, not Medicare, Medicaid, you have to have, you have to make under a certain amount of income, okay? Income limit, right. yeah. So this guy had been getting penalized so much that his Social Security check had dwindled all the way down to where he oh qualified for Medicaid. Oh, right? that's sad. But well, don't feel too sad for him, but guess, guess what? Medicare takes care of 80%. Guess who takes care of the other 20%? His Medicaid does. <laughs> now, I'm not advocating that anyone should employ that strategy. Please don't. <laughs> but, no, that was a, a, a pretty... Uh, sad situation. Sad, that's what unique, it was. And that, and that's a, because, really, we need information. We need... Motivation all the time, but we need information, and we have to come to an agent like you, Curtis, where we can get good information, you follow through with your clients, and you help them make good decisions for their health care. Well, folks, unfortunately, that's all the time we have right now, but um, this is Curtis McCall. Remember, go to the website, Judge Angel's All Stars. Dot com, and you can contact Mr. McCall. You can get a lot of information about him and about Medicare. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Good. Here's a motivational moment. If you change nothing, nothing will change. Hi, my name's Mike Faust. I work for First Choice Business Brokers. If you own your own business and you think that at some point in the future, you may want to sell that business, I hope you'll take a moment and give me a call at the number you see below. We may be able to make changes in the way you've structured your business or in your record keeping that could impact the value of your business in the future so that when you are ready to sell, you'll be able to get the most money possible for that business. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Imagine you're sitting in church, enjoying the service, by the way, and you're phone starts flashing. Mine does. 
I looked at my phone last Sunday in church, and it said American First Credit Union. Debit transaction of $900 was successful at CVS. If unrecognized, hit this link to dispute. Well, of course, most of you know, and all of us need to know, this is a scam. Do not hit any link. Don't dispute anything on your phone. Wait until the next business day. Call your financial institution, and they will tell you what you need to do, if anything. In my case, it was a complete scam. American First Credit Union stated they never text anyone about disputes. So remember. Here's another motivational moment. It doesn't matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. Welcome, everyone. This is Judge Angel's All Stars, and we have a great star for you today. The one, the only, Mr. Freddie B. Freddie, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're so happy to have you here. Yes. Now, uh, you were like in your 40s or something, but mm -hmm. when did you first <laughs> discover you have a beautiful singing voice? <laughs> well, I don't know, when I was quite a youngster. Um, uh -huh. I was raised in a musical family. Oh. And we took a lot for granted because we thought, I did anyway, I thought what I was hearing came out of everybody's house. I, I didn't Beautiful. Know, I Who didn't else know. was performing in your house? My grandmother primarily. She, Her, her girlfriends were Leontine Price, Mahalia Jackson. Oh, my God. Uh, her running buddies. And they used to get in the kitchen and do seven-up cakes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they'd be singing as they're preparing the cakes. Of course. Yes. And so the neighbors would pile up on the stairs. And I just actually thought those sounds came out of everybody's grandmother's house. Uh -huh. I just actually took it for granted. I had no idea that what I was witnessing. Wow, <laughs> you were with the icons, the yes. greats. Yeah, yeah. And, and the neighbors would come and just have a concert, right, sit on concert. the porch. <laughs> sit right on the porch and be very quiet. It was, uh, you all behaving? <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Yes. Great way to grow up. Yes. Yeah. Now, who was a great influence in your singing career? In my singing career? I think I would have to start with uh, some of the people that I was introduced to as a youngster. Mm. So that would be Lou Rawls, Gene Chandler, believe it or not. Uh, I mean, some of those baritones, those strong baritones of the back in the day. Where did you grow up? I, I grew up it. on the south side of Chicago. Okay. And okay. we had this Street 47th Street. And it's since been converted to Muddy Water Boulevard oh. uh, and Tobacco Road. So Lou Rawls was a heavy influence on the south side of Chicago. Excellent, yes. excellent. Mm -hmm. How great, how great. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I understand you also, you, you're writing and singing these days. I, I decided to challenge myself. I had no idea I could write. Um, and it, was, it, it just never sounded good enough to me. You know, mm, a harsh didn't. critic. That's what you. Yeah, are. yeah, yeah. I was, Self critic. Yeah, I, I was tough on me, and I finally just uh, actually Didi convinced me to just let go of those hangups and <laughs> give it a shot, and we came up with one that we we're pretty proud of. In fact, one of your guests to, on today's show actually did the, a film production work on it on the video. Extremely proud of it. She did a heck of a job. So you've written this great song, mm. Child Support Blues. Yes, yes. What was your motivation to write that? <laughs> I actually lived it. <laughs> so uh, imagine, if you will, I was a police officer in Chicago. So imagine, if you will, the police coming to arrest me for late payments. <laughs> and they say, oh, we know you. We work together. We were just on midnight well, together last week. <laughs> it was weird. It was weird. I'm the only one coming from the jail area with a gun <laughs> on, and the judge say, you again? <laughs> Would you please catch up on the bill? Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. well, how, how did that happen? Give us a little insight. Oh, wow. So I married at a very early, tender age, yeah. way before I was ready, and made a baby. Mm. And, um, oh, my God. This is kind of a horror story, actually, but... <laughs> and you should, I 
promise you, you will have fun at this interview. <laughs> and now the screw is going yeah. in. <laughs> it's okay, though. All right, so uh, I ended up living the child support blue saga. Okay. So that, that being said, it's a firsthand information. <laughs> <laughs> I did the research. <laughs> so, oh yeah. my God. What are some of the lyrics in Child Support Blues? She walked into the courtroom with a skirt about old thigh high. The judge looked over his glasses at those thighs and said, Son, kiss your money goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> that was a subtle hint. Subtle hint. I got a fair warning. Okay. You through, dude. Okay. It's a wrap. <laughs> and, and what's so wonderful about the song is, mm. first of all, how long did it take you to write it? You know what? Lyrically, that, that song came together uh, in about three to four weeks, a month, a month and a half. Very good. But it's been bouncing in my head around before I finally pulled the trigger or Dee Dee made me pull the trigger for about three years. Oh, okay. I just didn't have faith in it. I just didn't, just didn't believe it was going to be good enough. Those are the ones, folks. When yeah. you have an idea, mm -hmm. follow it. Hello. Don't talk yourself Don't out. Don't talk of yourself it. out. Of you are your most critical critic. Critic. That's right. That will ever be Don't around do you. Don't do it. Don't do it. So Don't do it. remember, <laughs> when you feel it, that passion is in your heart. Yeah. Follow it through. Yeah. Let it go. Who Who cares if you don't make it the first time? Look at Thomas Edison. <laughs> Just continue to try and try. But so Miss mm -hmm. Didi finally got you said to sit down and start writing so, and let's she, see what you have. I think she had. might have popped me upside my head and <laughs> slammed the door. Don't come out of here till you got a hit. Okay. That was pretty much the way it went down. Wonderful, wonderful. And now we discovered that you can go to your Alexa yeah. and say, Alexa, play Child Support Blues. Right. And it comes on. Now, that's an amazing feeling. See, my Alexa is trying to play it right now. <laughs> I love that's, it. That's Thank so you, cool. Lord. That's that so is cool. so cool. And that's a wonderful feeling. Yes, it is. It's kind of spooky that Alexa is listening to our every word. Uh, don't like, ever forget uh, that. Uh, she can hear everything. And I don't know, maybe your cell phone can. I don't know. They can keep up with us. Anyway. Okay, what about some of the jazz things you've done? Well, the latest project, we teamed up with Tom Schumann from Spiral Gyra, oh. and Gilo Morgan um, years ago believed in me and did some work on me, so we managed to mesh his work and Tom's work together and came up, oh, and Paul Jackson Jr. So <laughs> Paul Jackson Jr. loaned me his talent on this last um, Smooth Jazz CD. Okay. And, and the project I'm extremely proud of, and we're literally looking for a Grammy nomination out of this. And listen, it, you heard it here mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. This all star, Freddie B, mm -hmm. told us the scoop. Yes. Okay, thank look you. for those Grammys. <laughs> yes. I know I'll be shouting. Thank okay? you so much. You're yes. going to be front row center. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We got to get Do you. Do not there. forget, <laughs> I have it on film. <laughs> You got to hold me to it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So I'm so excited because I didn't realize you were writing and singing. Did you start off singing a particular genre of music? Oh, absolutely. Here's another little short story. So coming up, my older sister had a girlfriend, and she's older, so I was the little brat brother. Okay. So they wanted to go to the Regal Theater, her and her girlfriends. And they were almost out the door, and my grandmother said, Whoop, up, up, you got to take your little brother with you. Uh-uh. So I was the tag along. <laughs> and they put me in a seat, and then they disappeared. But they left me alone, but much to my surprise, these five guys came out from backstage, and they were called the Temptations. Mm. Hmm. And they asked you to sing with mm -hmm. them? Oh, my God. Thank you. See, that's God. That's what I love. I have to give my little speech here. Mm. Oh, I love it. God will mm. open doors that we don't even know exist. No. He will make a way out of no way. Right. Thank you, Lord. I mm. love that. Yeah. So you were this handsome kid <laughs> sitting there by that. yourself. <laughs> well, you're nice looking now. <laughs> okay. And so you're sitting there, and they say, oh, he's cute. Come on up here, little no, boy. No, not quite that way. Okay, um, what? I actually cut school. See, in, in, the <laughs> in those days, when they you, booked you in the um, 
Regal Theater and some of the Apollo, those would be week long engagements. Oh, okay. So I didn't know that. I thought it was just the weekend. Yeah. So when I found out they were there Monday through Sunday uh, or Saturday, whatever it was, I cut school. Okay. And snuck back up there and banged on the back door. Um, <laughs> Well, at least you had confidence. That's what I Determination. Like. <laughs> right. And uh, Carl Wright was the MC. Now, if you don't know that name, Carl was the one of the guys in the barbershop movies that was sitting in the corner and playing checkers oh, and had a, okay. all the comments to make. Okay. <laughs> anyway, he, back in the day, he was the um, in-house announcer for the Regal Theater. Okay. So we knew him, and I banged on the door, and he happened to open the door. Mm -hmm. Boy, you're supposed to be in school. I want to see Temptation. <laughs> he smacked me upside my head. Come on, get in here. <laughs> and took me to the dressing room. And that's where I sang with him. After oh I went into gosh. shock, um, and my mouth hanging open, <laughs> <laughs> looking and staring at him, I just started singing one of their hits. And then they chimed in, Judge. All right. Messed up my whole life. Oh, my God. Messed How up beautiful. the whole life. Well, they were impressed that you were so young and you knew their song. You knew their lyrics. Uh, okay. Uh, yep, yep. That was beautiful. And they told Eddie Kendricks that they would fire him if he gave him any trouble or replace, me with, replace him with me. Okay. But, now, he laughed, of course, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> okay. It was beautiful to yeah. hear. It was building yeah. your confidence. It was. They what were, other you... songs have you written? Oh, uh, Island Lady. Okay. Uh, it's on. It's the title of the CD before this Child Support Blues release, and there's three tunes on there that I, I wrote, and of course Tom Schumann from Spiral Gyra okay. produced for me, and I'm excited about that. I, those, Absolutely. Those, those are the ones that 91.5 here in Las Vegas are showing me love with. Oh, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to show you some love, too. Oh, uh, terrific. We want you to know that, folks, just go to judgeangelsallstars.com. That's the website, judgeangelsallstars.com. And we're going to keep updates mm. of Freddie. We're going to have his songs on our website. Wonderful. So you just click on Freddie's interview and it will give you all the latest updates. Mm. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. Will thank you come back? Thank you so back? much for having me. Oh, anytime. Okay. <laughs> Every time you get ready to do something, promise me. If oh. You, when you're in town, just come back. Beyond the shadow love a doubt. Thank you so much, Judge. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Stay tuned in to well, Judge Angel's show. For She's sure. a terrific host. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll be right back. Remember, we are so happy to have you with us. This is the Judge Angels All-Stars Show. All of you are all-stars. This show is for you and about you. Go to the website, judgeangelsallstars.com, and we'll see you next time.